Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my August 31st, 2018 Friday Reads AM Reading Update. <laughs> so basically, this is about the books that I will definitely finish in September, but I'm counting on for my August uh, literary newsletter anyway, <laughs> because I can! It's my newsletter! <laughs> So I'm filming this on Thursday evening, and I just got back from my book club where we were discussing The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin, the one of the first books that I finished this month. Uh, so I thought I'd just uh, check in briefly to uh, say that uh, the club was not really able to dislodge my love for this book. I think I did like it a lot more than many of them, although um, the consensus was, I think, that uh, most of them liked it, or enjoyed it while reading it, or enjoyed it despite the flaws that they saw in it. And interestingly enough, we all came to the book saying uh, that we saw flaws in the writing and, and in the story construction, but, I <laughs> but uh, the, what I thought uh, were flaws I think were a little bit different from uh, what other people thought were flaws, but <laughs> they weren't able to dislodge my, uh, <laughs> my love. <laughs> Or even uh, the fact that I think that the whole fortune teller thing is kind of a flaw and that I think the book could really work <laughs> without the whole fortune teller thing if, if Benjamin had just moved things around. <laughs> anyway, uh, I rambled a bit, hopefully. Hopefully uh, we had fun at the meeting, although I don't think I was as eloquent as I was in my Goodreads review. <laughs> but that's just uh, the price of uh, speaking in a conversation in the moment. <laughs> So yeah, I've already rambled enough about this book on this uh, channel anyway, so I'll just end that update there. <laughs> the first book that I finished this week was Waking Lions by Ayelet Gunder Goshen and translated from the Hebrew by Sandra Silverston. Uh, I also think I won't be talking about this one very much here, or I shouldn't, because I already did a long solo video review uh, for it uh, just last night for... Um, Women in Translation Month. Uh, so I'll link that down below. Uh, but just to summarize quickly, this is a book that is about an Israeli doctor who uh, runs over an Eritrean immigrant and uh, leaves him for dead, basically. But uh, the next day, his uh, the Eritrean's widow finds him, uh, has his wallet in hand, and, uh, you know, coerces him into uh, doing her bidding. And basically, um, all of the chips that fall and follow this event. But I, um, it's more of an introspective literary novel. Although um, I had a little, uh, I had some cocked eyebrows at my book club uh, when I said that tonight because we were talking about other things that we'd read or watched or whatever recently. And they're, they were saying like, isn't this a thriller? Isn't it a genre book? And I was like, no, it's not really. And even the Goodreads reviews that didn't like it were saying that, <laughs> you know, it was a boring literary novel and not a gripping thriller. And I mean, I think really the impetus of the novel is about um, psychological events, really, uh, where we're focused is uh, what is happening to people personally in the uh, in their own heads, not so much like is uh, he going to get caught. I mean, that's definitely something simmering in the background, but uh, the major focus of the novel is about interior psychological drama. <laughs> anyway, I really like this book, although I'm wondering if maybe uh, the intensity of uh, my lo love for the book is kind of dying down a little bit, uh, maybe even uh, aided a bit by uh, the review I did, because as I was uh, reading over um, some passages in the review, I kind of fell out of love a little bit with the writing. <laughs> it's okay, and maybe in the moment uh, there's something to be said for how it sweeps you up in the moment in its interior drama, but... Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be giving it a five in a few months or not, but uh, for now I'm giving it a strong four and uh, it's a gripping and uh, disturbing in a good way novel. The next book I already returned to the library. Um, I finished it uh, the other day. It's um, Hidden Pictures by Meg Wallitzer. It's her second published novel for adults, and I think it's going to be my least favorite book that she's ever written because um, I've read most of her books now. I officially have just one more book that I'll show you soon uh, of her adult fare that I have yet to read. And this one uh, is like her sophomore slump book, and uh, it didn't even read like her other books. It just lacked all of her evocative writing and introspection. It just uh, felt like a very topical story about um, a lesbian couple in, in the 80s. And I'm not to 
bash it or anything. I thought that uh, it was a decently constructed story and I enjoyed uh, hearing from the characters and their perspectives, uh, especially because of uh, the historical time frame, because we were following this uh, lesbian couple that lived in suburbia during a time when that was exceedingly rare. But I don't feel like the story necessarily challenged me that much, unlike uh, her best works, which uh, always challenge me. Uh, it was just sort of a as-you-go story about uh, a family and people. And <laughs> Anyway, uh, it disappointed me, and it disappointed me even a little bit more because uh, it was about lesbians, and there aren't that many books about uh, lesbian couples. Uh, <laughs> Not that I feel like I see a lot more about gay couples and uh, gay male couples and straight couples than I do a lesbian couple, so uh, maybe I should be looking harder. I'm sure there's more out there for me to see, uh, better fare, better written, more uh, more deep and challenging than, than this. But uh, as it goes, uh, it's not a horrible story. I enjoyed it for what it was, but it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't uh, prime Wallitzer book. She had not reached her, her prime yet. <laughs> so next, uh, the other day, I started this book. Uh, this is The Patriots by Sana Krasikov, uh, and I read her book of short stories last year for, or the year before perhaps, for the Sammy Rohr Project because uh, she won one of the fiction years uh, way back when, so I will link uh, that video down below too. <laughs> Uh, I was hoping to be a bit further along in this uh, by this point because I've been trying to schedule in how many chapters I should uh, read at night <laughs> because I want to keep up with my reading goals after all and I'm about a day behind uh, right now but <laughs> what can you do? It's been a pretty busy week actually and uh, hey I do have a three day weekend coming up so uh, hopefully all's well that ends well. <laughs> <laughs> if that applies. Uh, so just briefly I'll say that uh, I, I really like it. I can tell this is a very um, sprawling novel really. Uh, we are in several time periods at once, uh, you know, chapter by chapter we are flitting back decades uh, following members of this family. Uh, the family, uh, the matriarch of the family is an American expat who in the 30s who uh, is uh, sick of American bougie culture and really is mostly following a guy, it seems, uh, to try and live in Russia. She is a uh, Jewish, not exactly communist, but uh, sort of anti-bougie, uh, <laughs> uh, idealistic uh, young woman who uh, wants to see uh, a better world, whether she finds it or not, it doesn't seem like <laughs> It doesn't seem like she does find it because then we come to near the present day where her um, middle-aged son Julian uh, is back in America and has uh, lived his childhood uh, in Stalin's Russia and USSR and uh, <laughs> doesn't seem to have enjoyed the experience but his own son Lenny uh, has left America again to be a venture capitalist in Russia and uh, I don't know, it's kind of giving me a little bit of whiplash how different Russia is in, <laughs> in the 30s versus the thousands. There's a lot of rich detail in all of this. It's a very uh, lush uh, writing, um, although there's um, a lot of the members of the family are involved in the oil business and venture capitalism, and uh, Krasikov has lots of details about it, but I am not that familiar with this world, so I'm finding it uh, kind of hard to latch on. I mean, for me, I think uh, the most interesting parts are about uh, the character idealism and belief stuff. And uh, Anyway, I'll read from the flap. When the Great Depression hits, Florence Fine leaves Brooklyn College for what appears to be a plum job in Moscow and the promise of love and independence. But once in Russia, she quickly becomes entangled in a country she can't escape. Many years later, Florence's son Julian will make the opposite journey, immigrating back to the United States. His work in the oil industry takes him on frequent visits to Moscow, and when he learns that Florence's KGB file has been opened, he arranges a business trip to uncover the truth about his mother and to convince his son, Money, who is trying to make his fortune in the new Russia, to return home. What he discovers is both chilling and heartbreaking, an untold story of what happened to a generation of Americans abandoned by their country. Well, which country? <laughs> the Patriots is a riveting evocation of the Cold War years, told with brilliant insight and extraordinary skill. 
alternating between Florence's and Julian's perspectives. It is at once a mother-son story and a tale of two countries bound in a dialectic dance. A love story and a spy story, both a grand old-fashioned epic and a contemporary novel of ideas. Through the history of one family moving back and forth between continents over three generations, The Patriots is a poignant tale of the power of love, the rewards and risks of friendship, and the secrets parents and children keep from one another. So yeah, I'll be checking back next week uh, to give my uh, complete thoughts. And finally, next on my docket to read is my final adult, uh, Meg Wallitzer book, her third book for adults called This Is Your Life uh, by Meg Wallitzer. And I'm pretty hopeful about it because, uh, well, I will read from the flap. There is Dottie Angles on screen now, swathed in a size 20 dress, cracking fat jokes that have Johnny and Ed writhing in their seats. The studio audience is roaring and ratings are soaring. America adores Dottie, all 200 pounds of her. And there are Dottie's daughters, home alone in their cavernous Manhattan apartment, staring longingly at their mother's televised image. Opal and Erica adore Dottie too, if only from afar. How does fame affect the children of the famous? How do these sisters, growing up together, born of the same gene pool, come to be such different women? Why does one flourish when the other fails miserably? Opal is small, lithe, well-liked, and destined for happiness. She glides through school on the grease skids of popularity, and then lands herself a job on TV's hottest comedy show, Rush Hour, where, as usual, the sky's the limit to her success. But Erica is overweight and self-loathing, with an obsessive attachment to Jordan Strang that sinks her further and further into a world of drugs and despair. When Dottie's ratings start to slide, and Opal can't even get the producers of Rush Hour to give her mother a break, then the strengths these three women have held in reserve until now are forced to flower. Dottie Angles and her daughters are as vividly cast as is the television comedy milieu of the 1970s in which this family makes its home. This Is Your Life provides Meg Wallitzer, one of the most critically acclaimed writers of her generation, a rich and freshly envisioned world in which to create an unusual American family who reflects all of our families. <laughs> that uh, moniker for uh, Meg Wallitzer seems more indicative of today than uh, the uh, late 80s when this was written. <laughs> But anyway, uh, one thing I guess that intrigues me off the bat about this book is that it's about a family that is steeped in comedy, and that reminds me uh, immediately of Jules, the protagonist of her most famous novel, I believe, The Interestings, who, uh, when she goes to summer camp, uh, latches onto the idea of becoming a comedic actress. Uh, it doesn't necessarily work out, but it's a sort of role that she takes on for herself, sort of a comic role in her French group that uh, really works for her. And I feel like uh, Wallitzer can uh, do that really well, show the uh, comic side uh, to real life, <laughs> as it were, uh, without, uh, you know, turning into some sort of uh, strained sitcom. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty hopeful. I think this, uh, I'm feeling like in this head that this will really be a Wallitzer type book, unlike the last one that I read. And then once I read this, I will re be reviewing It and Hidden Figures and uh, her first uh, novel, Sleepwalking, in a uh, Wallitzer backlist review. I've made two of them in the past. I'll link the list down below, and then this one will be my final one. <laughs> and I'll be caught up, more or less, with her backlist, and I'm very excited. <laughs> So that about covers it for me now. I'm doing a lot of uh, video filming and editing and so forth uh, in this stretch of a few days, starting yesterday with my uh, Women in Translation review, and then today with uh, Friday Reads, and then uh, this weekend on the 1st, uh, I have the National Book Fest, which is uh, one September reading event that I didn't mention in my uh, haul video, I believe. I talked a lot about September literary things that I'll be doing, but uh, I'll be starting off with uh, the National Book Fest put on by the Library of Congress, and it is a day long of bookish activities uh, taking place in Washington, D.C., uh, including author talks and signings, and then a big exposition hall with uh, uh, events for the kids, and uh, lots of uh, media organizations are coming in to uh, to sponsor and to show things, so show off literary wares, and I'm 
very excited. I try to get uh, books signed there every year. I got, get one signed for my niece and now my baby nephew and of course myself too. <laughs> and my dad comes with me and I think he's going to spend all day in the main uh, room. <laughs> kind of like a, a big convention goer. He's turning into a major geek just uh, hanging out in one room all day. <laughs> so I'm very excited and I'll uh, hopefully be shooting a little bit of footage of that. I did that last year as well so hopefully I'll make something new and exciting for uh, 2018. So uh, check back here then. Meanwhile, hope you all have a great uh, reading weekend. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.